Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its technical analysis. If you're new, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back. And we're going to get into this week's fundamental and sentiment analysis as that's really what drives the markets. And we use the supply and demand technical analysis to uh, determine value and where we want to enter on a price chart. Right, so week ahead from trading economics, uh, it's going to be a light week on the US economic calendar with investors focusing uh, focus turning on flash market PMIs existing home sales and corporate earnings so a light one for the US elsewhere flash PMIs surveys for the UK eurozone Japan and Australia will also be in the spotlight alongside UK unemployment and wage data that's going to be quite important as well and I'm going to allude to that in a sec um, eurozone consumer confidence and Japan trade balance and inflation rate that's quite important the People's Bank of China, European Central Bank, and Bank of Japan will also provide an update on monetary policy. So that'd be interesting. While traders will also keep an eye on WEF annual meeting that will take place in Davos. So um, the really the, the focus, I guess, um, is going to be on a few um, uh, currencies this week. If I go to Forex Factory, you've got um, the, the monetary policy statement. So monetary policy statement pretty much is... Um, the Bank of Japan and other banks as well, because you've got the Bank of um, Canada as well, monetary policy report, um, and they basically giving forward guidance on what they what they are planning to do with interest rates if they're trying to strengthen or weaken their uh, the the currency, and that's what really interest rates um, are doing, right? And um, also we've also got it doesn't mention it, we've got um, New Zealand CPI, which is going to be quite important, uh, consumer prices index in there as well, <clears throat> so some. So there's a lot of uh, central bank um, news, matter of fact, so Canadian overnight rate, um, depending on what they're doing, they're expected to, to hold at um, 1.75, which is probably going to be uh, what happens. But um, CPI will also be interesting for the Canadian dollar. But I just want to focus a little bit before we get into the charts on the uh, pound, right? And... Uh, consumer Consumers cut back on spending again, adding to economic gloom for the pound. So British consumers failed to increase their spending for a record fifth month in a row. This was on the um, on the uh, um, Friday, adding to signs of economic weakening that might prompt Bank of England to cut rates this month. Yeah. So <clears throat> we also had earlier in the uh, in the week. I think it was Wednesday. I think was um, the inflation report, and the inflation report was uh, went from I think one point five to one point three. Um, um, uh, CPI for the uh, um, for the pound as well, which was not good. So the further away that the bank uh, get away from their inflation target, the uh, more likely they are to cut interest rates. Now this is uh, the CME Group. So this is CME Bank of England Watch Tool. I'll put the link in the description box below for those um, of you who want to use this and keep an eye on this. And um, basically, it works exactly like the Fed Watch Tool, where it's the probabilities of um, uh, a, a potential rate cut, hike or hold. So um, the the probabilities of an increase are now at 72%. One month ago, so last year on the 12th, um, sorry, the 19th of December, it was at 12%. A week ago, the probabilities of a rate ease was at 21% and now it's at 72%. So, um, you know, as the probabilities increase for a rate ease, and that's because of you know Brexit, um, you know low inflation. Uh, Mark Carney came out, I think it was last week with his um, last week Thursday, saying that you know he's worried about um, the economy and what was happening, um, and they were pretty much dovish on interest rates. You can start to see it's a buy the rumor, sell the fact scenario. Yeah. Um, uh, I've been, you know, short the pound from uh, last year, trying to get short the pound, you know, in um, our Trading 180 group. And we basically base our um, decisions off of our uh, custom fundamental analysis spreadsheet, which ranks the economies based off of uh, data points like interest rates, inflation and GDP, as well as some others. United States is number one. The United Kingdom is number six, number one being the strongest, number eight being the weakest. So United Kingdom and Swiss franc are actually the weakest, uh, some of the weakest at the moment. So for us, <clears throat> we've been short 
you know, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the pound, um, trying to get short the pound from, uh, from last year, matter of fact, and, uh, we'll look at the charts and see. So, um, everything's now coming to, uh, coming to a head potentially, um, in the next 10 days for the pound, but let's get into the, um, uh, the, the technicals and we'll start off on the U S dollar index, which is a measure of dollar strength against the major currencies like the euro, the pound and the yen as well as the Australian dollar. So um, we've made pretty much new highs, the you know the dollar basically being number one um, against all currencies. So um, we're seeing you know pretty much dollar went a bit sideways and now it's you know uh, strengthening. Um, I'm gonna keep this supply zone here for now, just for now. Yes, there's you know the candles closed, but this could be potentially just a stop hunt. Not to say that we trade this, but prices could still reverse from here. So I'm gonna keep that there. If there's another bullish day that closes beyond that, then pretty much that supply zone has gone. Um, and it's now created a bit of a demand zone here. So we've made higher highs, higher lows like this. Yeah, so we know higher highs and higher lows lead to you know, stronger, potential strong areas of demand. So we need to see demand really push higher before we understand that this is definitely a uh, strong area of demand. So we see prices push higher like that. Um, so if you do wanna be a buyer of the dollar at the moment, uh, you're looking for a pullback into a demand zone, proven demand before looking at getting long. And again, you would look for that um, as confluence and then go to any dollar crosses. Um, and look for buy trades or look to buy the dollar. If you are looking to short the dollar, potentially on some dollar weakness for whatever reason, fundamentally, then you're probably looking at now is the time um, and then obviously go to um, the uh, dollar crosses and look for any kind of you know short trades on the dollar. So next is the dollar yen. So dollar yen again, um, uh, correlating with the US dollar strength and more of a risk on sentiment as well. Uh, prices have obviously made their way a lot higher. So still eat some of this and come up into this supply zone. Now again, um, what we're looking for is really just a direction. Our direction um, of trading is determined by the fundamentals, not because prices are in a supply zone that we're just gonna you know, um, short here. It doesn't really work like that. What you should be doing is looking at bargain prices and uh, understanding why you're buying one currency over another and at the moment the dollar is you know stronger than the yen the yen does strengthen in a risk off environment so if you do want to get short then i'd probably wait for some sort of risk off sentiment to get short right here yeah um from now if risk on continues then it's literally just waiting for pullbacks into the demand zone i'm pretty much long on this currency pair so the next you know, area that I want to be really kind of long on is going to be down here. I think this is a really nice uh, demand zone here um, for the time being. So that's where we want to get uh, long on that uh, currency pair. If I'm looking to buy the dollar, uh, dollar Swiss, uh, a lot of the guys in the Discord trading group are actually in um, at this area here. And this was really based off of a weekly, um, a weekly, uh, demand zone if you go to the weeklies sorry one second there we go and then that's actually a demand zone there so demand I should have had this ready for you guys but here we go right so looking at the weekly yeah there was a weekly demand right here so um, a lot of the guys we saw a nice um, entry candle on the hourly pick pretty much picked off the absolute lows on this one um and we're in a little bit of profit at the moment so uh, hopefully we should see prices you know increase as uh, the risk off uh, sentiment fades and it's more risk on at the moment so and with dollar strength as well uh you know we're uh, potentially uh looking at a decent move to the upside so that's a supply zone so at the moment, daily demand is gonna be at, actually at these lows here. So depending on what happens, if risk off comes into the market, then it probably, it may wanna put you know an end to this trade, but the next area to really look for any kind of long trades is gonna be down here 
yeah also as well um, just a little tip that we haven't really had a pullback into any kind of fair value and this is what I was saying to a lot of the uh, a lot of the guys in the group is um, if you're looking for targets what you want to do is look for prices tend to want to pull back to some sort of fair value zone so the um, between an expensive and a cheap level 50% of that range was going to be uh, fair value and what you what you're seeing is, is prices making new lows but prices actually haven't pulled back to fair value haven't pulled back to fair value so now that we've picked off the absolute low somewhere around here and our entries were somewhere down here um, what we can now do is look for targets all the way up into potential fair value so this is going to be a nice swing trade at some point prices tend to come back up to fair value and we've basically um since november the 29th um you know we've uh, we haven't had no pullback zero pullback and uh so that's quite a nice um target area where we want to look for potential long trades and if prices continue to go lower then it just makes that target a lot you know the risk reward a lot better anyways um if you do want to get short on the uh the, the swiss franc then you're looking at supply zones right here again more of a risk off sentiment play let's say for example there's uh i don't know some sort of global slowdown or you know talks of war again um, with iran then you may you know if prices come up here then that would be a decent short trade to the downside dollar cad and the cad and the dollar has pretty much just gone sideways the whole week you know hasn't done anything so there's really not much to talk about on this one um if prices go higher that's where to short here if prices go lower yeah and you want to get short then this would create a bit of a supply zone that would be the last bullish candle before prices actually no sorry what i'm talking about this is, would be the last bullish candle before prices make a new low uh one sec and then that would be a supply zone i'll oh, come off it all right let me just draw that in in here so that would be the supply zone there yeah and then if this makes a new low then you're waiting for a pullback into this zone before looking at getting short so that's pretty much how it works but in the meantime um there really isn't any uh supply zones at the moment it's just literally gone sideways so uh we're looking at other pullbacks into demand if you want to be a buyer of the dollar right here or a move up to get short right there um new zealand dollar us dollar and again prices have really kind of been in this range there was an opportunity to kind of get short in the week on the lower time frames <clears throat> at this uh 0 0.660 level prices have sold off also a decent buy as well but not much pips in this um unfortunately if i was going to be a buyer or a seller of either one i'd be a buyer of the us dollar over the new zealand dollar so um looking at you know short trades here or the best area would be up at the highs as we know that this is definitely a strong area of you know supply around there so uh yeah we're looking at you know shorting probably up here or if prices again make start to make really new new lows like this then you wait for a pullback into supply before looking at getting short like that uh pound dollar <clears throat> pound dollar so pound dollar um again it was all about trying to look for potential short trades and again during the week this presented you know a really nice opportunity you know to get you know short a nice engulfing candle there on the hourly etc so um and now with the narrative of the uh, central bank uh, bank of england looking to cut rates uh, there should really be no reason to actually enter you know um, or sorry exit this trade anytime soon does that mean that prices are going to go all the way down no it doesn't mean that it just means that the balance and the balance of probabilities we should see that happen if prices go to the upside and stop traders out um then it was more of a manipulation than anything um and uh but let's see what happens it's still you know the, the the pound is still a short trade regardless of whether you lose one or two trades yeah because um of brexit because of uh potential trade deals not being done um because of low inflation so overall you know the the, the pound really is in my opinion a short but if you do want to 
buy the pound based off of maybe some short-term sentiment and you're following price, then I would say that area down here would be the best, you know, it's 129 round number um, or just a bit lower than that, you know, here. But you really want to make your decisions based on the fundamentals rather than, um, you know, just looking at, you know, buying at demand or just selling a supply randomly, looking at price action. Uh, Euro dollar, Euro dollar, this is a nice, a nice trade um, uh, this week. And I just want to allude to my YouTube channel. And about three days ago, um, I made a Euro dollar short, right? Um, video supply and demand with stop hunt analysis, yeah? And in this video, I pretty much break down, you know, a trade and why, you know, there was a shorting opportunity, you know, around here, why traders are being stop hunted yeah, why traders got stop hunted in this whole zone right here. Yeah, this whole zone right here. This is where the stop hunt occurred. Um, and uh, why you should have been short, you know, in this supply zone, which now turns out to be, you know, to have to have worked out. Nice entry candle there, nice engulfing if you're trading golfings there. And that was a nice stop above the high. That was a nice two to one trade if you manage to get involved in that. So watch that video, you'll understand exactly why you should have been short here. Again, it just comes down to fundamentals. Why are you buying the Euro? You know, Euro, yeah, is, and I'll bring us over again, yeah, is number eight on our fundamental analysis spreadsheet. Um, and the, the dollar is number one. That doesn't mean that, you know, every single day that the, you know, the dollar is going to strengthen. Yeah, it doesn't mean that it's going to keep going down and down and down. There are pullbacks, there are manipulations, there are stop hunts, etc. There are sentiment plays where, um, you know, some days and some weeks the uh, the dollar um, might not be doing so well sentiment wise. But overall, bigger picture wise, you know, you really want to be, you know, short the uh, the euro dollar. It doesn't make sense to to buy the euro, especially because you know economically where they are and they're struggling overall, and they're going through their own, you know, Brexit, a lot of uncertainty. So it's just about getting short on this currency pair there was a nice nice trade um, on that um, uh, right there on the lower time frame um, so definitely check that video out and you understand the thought process and exactly you know um, why you should have been really getting short um, you know on here and you could have taken advantage of that trade so now we are where we are um, I would probably say if you're looking to be a buyer of the dollar you'd have to maybe wait for a uh, a move you know further down All right so uh just for the price to create new lows and then that becomes an area of supply yeah and then looking for a pullback there and then you're looking at short trades around there if you do want to be a buyer because um, i can't give uh, financial advice yeah and a buyer of the euro and you want to just um uh, try and get into some sort of trade to the upside then I would say the lower end is going to be probably the better area to look for buy trades on the euro dollar yeah fresher area of demand um, and it could be potentially like profit taking here so you could get obviously a bounce here and maybe take advantage of that if you want to get in and out um, on that trade euro yen euro yen prices came up into this just this higher area of supply I actually got stopped out of this trade um, by literally the spread. It must have been about a pip and a half or something like that. Um, I was short on this. Um, there are some traders that are still short here in the group who did a wider stop than me. Um, and uh, they're still in this trade. So uh, well done to them. Some trades work out, some trades, you know, don't. Um, I didn't get every entry either because um, I'm in some other um, uh, profitable um, yen trades um, on other currency pairs like the uh, the pound yen um, I'm in that one and I'm also in the Swiss yen so I didn't want to re-enter on the euro yen because I'm I'll be too yen heavy um, so uh, I didn't bother to re-enter in this but there are traders in the group that have taken advantage of um, you know some price action you know in this area you know right here so uh, well done to them and they're currently up but where we are right now, um, I think we're gonna have to put a demand zone right here as we've made the new high. Demand, got some quite wide areas of demand right here. But if you are looking to get short, it's not too late. 
it's not too late. This is a decent, you know, um, engulfing candle if you enter on engulfing candles. So from a daily time frame perspective, you've got enough, you know, movement to the downside. Yeah, if you wanted, wanted to get short here in order to make that work. Um, so decent, you know, open on the uh, on the uh, uh, Sunday open potentially decent uh, move to, to the downside, especially if risk off comes into the market. Yeah, if risk off comes into the market, that would be, you know, very nice. Uh, if you do want to be a buyer of the euro, then the first area to look for, you know, some long trades is probably going to be around here. And because you've got that wide zone of demand, what you want to do is you want to break that down using um, support and resistance zones where you've got resistance, 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 bit of support, bit of resistance. So within this top end area of demand, we can see that this is where the supply and demand equation is probably gonna be strongest where you have not only demand traders getting involved here potentially, um, not the ones that know about fundamentals, but the ones that just follow technicals, but you also have other traders who just trade technical levels and this area here is gonna be an area of interest. And you can look back as well, you know, in the past, where traders are going to be uh, traded this level, so net net you should get some uh, some um, you know demand here from a technical analysis perspective. But if there's risk off comes into the market, the euro is probably going to end up weakening due to Brexit you know sentiment as well. Um, so I think this is a decent trade to the downside. I really do um, quite nice, and obviously the euro being the weakest of the uh, the major currencies at the moment. Um, so. Those are pretty much your options. Sell now if you want to buy the yen against the euro. Waiting for buy trades first at this area here, then probably further down right here. Uh, Aussie dollar and Aussie dollar. Um, got two competing currencies, but my bias is obviously to the uh, to the uh, US dollar rather than the uh, Australian dollar. So um, if this starts to pull back down here. Um, say pull back, but if it starts to continue going lower, it takes out this level of demand, then this becomes an area of supply right here. And then you're looking for pullbacks into, you know, that area before looking at getting short or if prices continue on the way higher, then you're looking at that to be short. You want to be a buyer of the US dollar. If you're looking to buy, buy be a buyer of the um, Australian dollar, then pretty much now is the time I think you know the first touch is always the best touch but the uh, second touches are okay as well right so anywhere probably around here the lower end before looking at getting long if not you're looking at that area there that nice fresh area of, of demand sorry in order to get long if you want to be a buyer of the Australian dollar and finally Australian dollar Japanese yen so this is, looks like some sort of profit taking. We've had, you know, anyone who bought down here is going to be taking profit, at the, you know, towards the highs, market highs as well. This was actually a nice um, uh, capture pain relief uh, trade as well to the downside. But with risk being on, um, I think potentially we could have some more upside. Who knows? But um, if risk is on, the Australian dollar does well. If risk is off, the Japanese yen. Uh, is strengthened so if, if if into next week we get some risk off sentiment yeah then this now starts to look like a really good trade to the downside prices are coming to that supply zone and start reacting and so uh, that would be quite a nice trade to the downside if there is some risk off sentiment so um yeah so pretty much again supply and demand isn't just um just technicals it's really driven by the fundamentals first and understanding where the money is flowing where's the value where's the uh, um, why are central banks you know trying to cheapen or strengthen their currencies etc strength versus weakness and then we come to the price chart and look for to you know for supply and demand zones to time our entries all right guys don't forget to like subscribe and share um, thank you for all of your comments as well um I, I really do appreciate the uh, the positive ones and even the negative ones um you know as long as they're constructive criticism and things like that you know everything is always welcome and if you want to join the discord group and join a uh, a really friendly group of uh uh, traders and learn you know the most advanced supply and demand course you know i know online um and that's what that's what traders have said to me then um uh, definitely go to trading180.com and check that out all right guys take care and i'll speak to you soon